Welcome to Wild Things. We are in, on episode uh, six. Number six. <laughs> it's hard to believe we've already done six of these uh, episodes. Um, I'm working on, for those of you who have sent in um, some of your projects and artwork, I'm working on getting some prizes packaged up right now. Um, if you haven't sent me anything and want to get in on the prizes, there's still time. So after this show um, today, you can send in pictures of some of your artwork that maybe you've already done and just haven't had time to send in. So, um, I like today's episode. Today's episode is going to be about creatures in Iowa and everywhere else that have basically filled every habitat on Earth except there's only two places where these creatures don't exist and that's in oceans and at polar regions. Uh, otherwise they live on mountaintops, they live in deserts, they live in frozen fresh water, um, and almost pretty much everywhere in between. They are all over the place. Um, they've also filled every ecological role that there is. There, there's some that are predators, some that are prey, some that are scavengers, you name it. There is one of these creatures that fills the, the niche. Um, so, what we're talking about comes in all shapes and sizes and colors. And most of us have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with these, with these things. Some, some of them are really beautiful and delicate. And others are strange looking and creepy, crawly all over tickles. the place. Tickles! <laughs> tickles! Um, but anyway, they do a lot of beneficial things, and at the same time, a lot of times, they kind of annoy us. So I'm guessing that you already know what I'm talking about, but just in case you haven't guessed, we're going to get out one of Andy's pets, and she's going to show you one of her pets, and that's going to give it away what the rest of the show is about. Hang on just a second. Dun dun dun! Here's one of Andy's pets. So now you know that this episode is going to be about insects. Andy's holding one of her Madagascar hissing cockroaches here. And these are not obviously found in Iowa. Some of you maybe have seen them at the zoo or somewhere like that. Or maybe one of you has one at home. Andy keeps hers in a terrarium. And she, this one has several um, other ones keeping it company. Uh, the one she's holding here is a female, but what I wanted to use this cockroach to show you is that all insects have certain body parts that makes them insects. So I'm going to have Andy show the three different parts of this insect here that every insect has. And that is each one has a head. I want to show its head. Its head is under there. Mm -hmm. Oops, see if I can get it in focus. There's, there's her head. Kind of hard to see because it's under that shell. And then she's got, what's the next part? She's got the thorax. The thorax. Up here. It's like this much. So and then the last part? The abdomen. So each insect has a head up here, thorax, and then abdomen. Obviously they look different on each insect. She's a, kind of a pretty one. And then each insect, one way we know it's an insect is it has how many legs, Ty? You want to count her legs? Can Six you see her? Six legs. legs. Yep. Let's flip her over and show the, let's see if we can show her legs. Oh, there we go. Whoops. It's hard to flip She doesn't want to flip over because she wants to hold on to Andy. So maybe we won't flip her over. There's her face there. Oh, there's her face. Hold on. See if we can get her in focus. And then, besides the uh, legs, you just have to trust us that she's got six legs. We'll show you on some other insects. Um, she has two antennae sticking out of the top of her head. Hard to keep this in focus for some reason, but Madagascar hissing cockroaches are kind of cool pets. They're pretty low maintenance, and um, the only bad thing is when babies escape the cage. I don't want to talk about that, but. Uh, Anyway, they're very gentle, not, they don't bite or anything like that, so this one's going to walk out here in the fresh air with Andy today. There you can see three legs on this side, and you can see three legs on this side. So she's got her six legs making her 
an insect. All right, we'll put her away and then we're going to talk about some things that you need to go if you're going to go looking for insects and go on an insect hunt. All right, bye hissy. Okay, so we're going to go on a little bit of an insect hunt here and see what we can find. Obviously, it seems like summertime is a bit better time to find insects because it's warmer, there's a lot more out and kind of bugging you, and a lot more butterflies. But we're going to see what we can find. We have some beehives we're also going to take a look at. Um, and Silas is not a fan of bees. He's got a bit of a phobia happening here. But anyway, anyway, Sai is going to show you some good things to have if you're going to go on a bug hunt. What's one thing you need, bud? Or you don't need it, but it's nice to have it. Apparently you don't need your glasses. Oh. Extra big glasses! <laughs> also no... Then you, uh, you might also need magnifying glasses. <laughs> that helps you see those parts of that bug really up close. How about the... show the little one there. Uh, if you don't have... Yeah, if you don't have magnifying lens, you, um, maybe you'll have one of these. It's called a bug box. And a hint, some of you might be getting one of these in the mail if you are... Don't, might be part of the prizes on some of them. Don't, don't keep them in the box too long or they'll suffocate. Yeah, you just want to keep them in there long enough to see what it is and look at it a little bit and then let it go. And then... Let, and then show those things. Here's a bug. Oh, no, not that. We'll show that later. <laughs> <laughs> a giant mm. net. A butterfly net. It's giant. Kind of helps if you want to catch something that's flying, and then you need something to put your bugs in. Why don't you show those? A butterfly thingy. There's a butterfly uh, container. This has netting on the sides. Andy's used that before to hatch out monarchs and other types of uh, butterflies and praying mantises. And then if you just have some type of empty container, that might be helpful so you don't have to hold the bug in your hand or the insect in your hand. You can put it in the container. Especially if it's a bee. You could put a few holes in the top. I just grabbed that one quick and haven't put a holes in it yet. So we got what we need to look for some insects. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, we're going to try to video this with a Vishla who wants attention and some goats who are making noise. Um, one thing I forgot to mention about things that you might need when you're bug hunting is an insect field guide. Um, this will help you to find out what kind of insect you're looking at, where they're found, and things like that. While we were out in our grass, Andy was able to find this insect. This is part of the true bug category of insects. And I hope it doesn't fly away before we get a picture of it. This is a type of stink bug. And you can see that it has an X on its back. And that's how you tell it's a true bug. I can't even get it. Can't you? Oh, I see. I, I get it now. You can see that its wings come out sometimes from underneath that exoskeleton. These are called stink bugs because they put out a stink. Can we see that, Andy? Yeah. yeah it's kind of hard to do these videos, guys. Bottom of this bug is green, so if we put it in our bug box, it's not very easy to videotape this, but um, you can get a good look at its underside there as it crawls around the magnifying lens of the bug box. Looking at its green abdomen there. All right, let's go find another one. All right, I'm going to take a look at some of these ants I found on this ant hill. I'm going to zoom in here. Hold on. It's fun to watch them because they're just in and out of their the uh, hole on their ant hill. I don't know what they're doing down there, but they are very busy all the time. Sometimes you walk by things like this and don't think much about it or 
try to step on the ants, but really if you sit down and watch, they're kind of fun to watch. They are always have a job to do. And they're, looks like that one's carrying something out of the hole. You can see on their bodies, they have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, and six legs. So we know these are insects. All right, so we're getting ready to go and check out our beehives. These are the bee guys. Bee guys. Bee guys. We're getting the smoker ready. Is that a smoker? Yeah, it is a smoker. Correct. That calms the bees down a little bit so they're not so angry when we go up and check on them. Hopefully. In theory. <laughs> All right, walking up to the hives. This is my first time doing this. Not you. Let's pull the live one apart first. Since she's here recording. All right, so. Oh, they're all coming out of there. This is freaky. Smoke. Get rid of the mouse guard. So they can. Do their thing. Oh boy. Ants. Another insect is invaded, it looks like. Is that normal? That is absolutely normal. Oh boy. Watch your sugar up on top for them. They've been eating all winter. It's like a constant buzz. Okay, so I removed the tray that had the sugar on it. Now we're gonna pull out some, what are these called? We're gonna this, take a whole box. This one's a honey oh. super that we left for them for the winter. Boy, there's some honeycomb coming out there. They don't seem very happy. They're pretty content right now. Yeah. All right. So this is actually a frame of honey. Oh wow. And they are bringing in. So the one right next to it's even fuller. Those cap stuff is what's the actual honey there that we harvest eventually in the fall. Wow, this one's got a lot on it. Yeah. See all the, the shiny uncapped stuff is all nectar from somewhere they're bringing it in from. Bringing it in from somewhere. We see them landing on all our flowering trees right now. Yeah. Yikes. Just a little wiggle so we don't crunch anybody. Well, There's I can eggs. tell you we've got eggs because yep. the little white, oh. those are little baby bees that were in the, were in the uh, cells between the boxes, which is unfortunate, but kind of can't be helped sometimes. So where is the queen? We in know. here somewhere. In there somewhere. Yeah. Actually, if you can get... Come on, buddy. Come back up. So... On there. I was hoping there was one full of pollen that had... Yeah. They've got little baskets on their back legs. And you'll see one running around and they have little white dots on their... Little white balls on their back legs. Yeah, I saw one of those yesterday. I tried to get a video, but I couldn't. Yeah. Those are full of pollen. Here, we'll just... And they, these bees have different jobs, right? Yep. So the queen, there's only one of those. Her job is to lay eggs. And then there's workers, and they do all the, all the work. Moving things around and bringing... Building out comb. Yep, building comb, bringing stuff in. So this guy right here, you can see he's got some uh, orange on his... 
back legs there. Oh yeah, I right see it right there. there. Yep. yep. See those? It's like he's got extra orange. Got the pollen. On his legs. Pollen sacks on his back legs. Cool. And these, uh, all these cells have an egg in them. Probably kind of. We'll find a darker, a darker comb. They're a little easier to hopefully see. Just a little. It's a little comma-shaped speck huh. in the very bottom of the... Oh, wow, look at this one. It's a lot of bees. And all of the, all of the cap stuff is our baby bees getting ready to, getting ready to hatch, emerge. Look at this one, has got green on its head. Oh, yeah. there, that's the queen. That's the queen that's right the there. That's the queen. Yep, that's the queen. There she is, guys. What, what's the green? They they mark, mark the queen so it's a little dot so, of paint so we can see her better. So she's easier to yep. see. Yep. Where they buy the bees from? They're the original bees from, right? Yep. yep. Buy the queen. There she is. In all her glory, doing her work. Yep. Cool. Hey, wild things! I think I mentioned somewhere during this program that insects go through state excuse me, stages, um, they, they may not always look like the insect that you think of, like let's say when you think of a ladybug or you think of a dragonfly or you think of a monarch butterfly. Um, when those animals were basically born, they didn't look like that. They went through some stages. Um, you may find some of these uh, insect cases um, attached to trees. And they're kind of paper thin, very lightweight. And you can see that there's a crack in the top of that there where the, this is in the case of a cicada, the cicada hatched out of that stage of its life and into the new stage of its life, which looks like this. I don't have, um, I don't have a cicada right now other than the one that's inside this plastic thing. Um, but it's kind of neat to think and to watch a cicada hatch from this stage into this stage that we hear um, singing and making lots of sounds in the in the trees, you know, in the evenings during the summertime. So um, you may find evidence of uh, insect stages as you're out and about looking for insects. The reason I'm showing you these things is because, um, you know, we could do a whole million episodes on insects. There's, I've just shown you just a very few of the, you know, 925,000 kinds of insects there are in the world. So obviously that would take a long time. So I'm just trying to show you a few things and get you to start paying attention and not just walking by these insects when you can kind of stop and pay attention to them and um, see what they're up to and um, observe some of their behaviors. All right, let's move on. All right, wild things. I'm going to draw a picture of a honeybee. That's what I want to put in my nature notebook this time because I want to remember what it felt like to walk up to that beehive and hear all that buzzing and having those honeybees swarming around me. They're such important creatures that we have um, pollinating and uh, without honeybees, we'd be we'd probably be in trouble with our food supply. Anyway, so I'm gonna I printed off a photo of a honeybee, and I'm gonna go off this photo and draw it into my nature notebook. So we're gonna put this in high speed, guys, because it might take you a little while.
All right, well, we're going to show you what today's activity is. Um, it's one that you get to use your imagination again. Uh, what we're doing is making our own insects out of whatever you can find at home, whether you want to use natural materials you find out in the yard or whether you want to use like household things or recyclables or something like that um, to build your own insects. Um, so we're going to show you what we made. Silas made this one last summer um, at my mom's house. So you want to talk about that one, Si? Well, it has like these different colored bunnies on its back. It has two antennae. And its eyes are sticking out. That's kind of cute. It has these other thingies. How many legs does it have? Four. Four? No. What are these? I didn't know those were legs. <laughs> thought it had six legs. Like yeah. an insect. And then it has a tongue right here. And... Is this a stinger? No, it's just one of those feely things. <laughs> okay, and then so... it's kind of striped. What's it made of? What's your whole insect made of? Wood. So he, he made that out of um, sticks and wood that we found at my mom's house and they actually used a drill to um, stick those legs into the log. The ones I made here are no, a little bit... used a saw. Okay, the ones I made here are a little bit different. Um, this one is made of a pine cone, some seeds for the wings, walnut shells, these eyes are made of uh, the tops of dried flowers and some twigs for the legs and I've stuck them onto a, a piece of bark, like it's climbing up the bark. No, and then some, twig, some twigs for the antenna. This one's a little bit different. I struggled with him. Use some wire for the legs. And these are three rocks that are glued together. A couple little pine cones for the eyes and some weird mouth parts here with the, st with the sticks. So that's just to give you an idea of some things you could do. I made some out of some colored pencils here. <laughs> Six legs, and then two mouth parts, and then there's the body. <laughs> okay, so yeah, remember insects have a head, thorax, abdomen, head, thorax, abdomen, antenna, and six legs. This only has a head and a head, head and abdomen. Wait, no, head, thorax. Okay. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys have a good week and spend some time being observant and looking at all the insects in your yard and out while you're out and about. Um, remember that there, we just showed you a few insects. Obviously there are thousands more and we didn't have time to, to look at all the insects we could find, but I hope that you stay curious and have a good week and send me your pictures at the email that you'll find at the end of this video. See you later.